Hello, Fire and Further here, and today I'd like to talk about picking up Tenere. It's not that it would be a special bike or there would be something really different about picking up um, particular Tenere, but what makes it special for me is that um, because the bike is very lean, it lays on the ground quite low, and that angle makes some techniques uh, a little bit more difficult than others. Um, it is 200 kilo bike, so it's a substantial amount of weight to pick up. Also, the bike is 150 centimeters tall. I am 168. So, you know, there's going to be a certain amount of wrestling here. Me and Improbably Adventuring, we spent about two days already now um, trying to pick up the Tenere and figure out what would be the best way for us. Because everyone, based on the combination of the bike and based on the combination of the rider and the terrain, will have a different preference for the method how they pick up the bike and what's going to be the safest. Now when I uh, travel and I drop the bike, I usually don't rush to pick it up uh, anymore. I used to do that, I'm not doing it anymore. Unless I drop the bike in the water, yeah, often happens, or something's leaking, which is not usually the case. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking if the bike is in the correct position to even start picking it up. Now what does that mean? That means that now I'm in a downhill here and the bike is in a good position because I'm going to be picking up its downhill. If it would be on the other side, I would have to pick it up uphill. If it's in the wrong position, there's no other way than just moving it around uh, to the position where you can start lifting it up. And yeah, it's going to get scratched. Now what I need to make sure is that Either I have a rear wheel in a gear or I somehow fix the front wheel. So what I have is a bungee cord, um, little tiny short bungee cord strapped on my front brake lever, which fixes the front wheel, engages the brake. And the reason doing that is that if you are uh, even in a slight downhill, it may have a tendency to actually float around and that may really throw you off when you're doing the lift. So that's a uh, good thing to do. Side stand, obviously I have a bike on the wrong side, so I cannot engage the side stand, but obviously side stand is something because when you're lifting it, you don't want to drop it uh, on the other side. It happens to me many times. And I guess that's about it. We have a position, we have the wheels, we have a side stand, um, and we can start lifting the bike. I'm probably adventuring here to talk about good form when picking up your bike. So you've probably heard two things about lifting. One is that you want to lift with your legs and not with your back. And secondly, that you want to maintain a straight back through the lift. So those are both correct, but let's explain what those mean. So straight back, first of all, this does not mean vertical. If you try to maintain a vertical back through your lifts, you're gonna find it extremely difficult. What it means is that you want to have a nice neutral spine position, that there is a line between your head your spine and your hips. You don't want to be flexed in or flexed out. Um, that's a recipe for injury. So you maintain your nice neutral spine position by bracing. You want to brace in your stomach and your shoulders. First, you take a big deep breath, you engage your muscles in your abdomen and you push out your diaphragm. Secondly, you tighten the muscles in your shoulder blades and kind of keep your chest pointed forward. You hold this through the entirety of the lift and that will keep your back from bending forwards or bending backwards. Now we want to get into position. So getting into position, first off, you want to make sure that your feet are about shoulder width apart, that your arms are straight. You're not trying to bicep curl the bike, so keep your arms straight. You got your back, you brace, and now you begin the lift. So a good cue for this is imagine two things. Imagine that rather than picking up the bike that you're pushing the ground away from you, this engages your quads and then imagine that you're pushing your hips forward and that will engage your glutes and that will give you that good lifting power. Now you may find that when you're doing this, even if you're doing everything correctly, that your back is rounding. This is usually a sign that you're lifting a heavier weight than what you should be. Cool, while we were talking about the form, we shown one of the lifts which I used to do with the CB500X. What I'm going to do now is show another three lifts and I'm gonna 
quickly talk about the mechanics of each of the lifts and why I like it for the Tenere or why it doesn't feel that right. Okay, very popular lift is the back lift. Uh, everybody knows that one. Um, <clears throat> mechanics very simple. Grab the handlebar, grab something in the back and your ass needs to push onto the seat. Feet apart, good brace position, nothing complicated in here and all the strength comes from the legs. So, let's do that and we walk towards the bike. Very easy, lifting the bike. It works great, I like that lift. Unfortunately, because the Tenere is so low, my ass is not pushing completely on a seat. It's really good lift for BMWs and all that, which are a little bit higher up, but still pretty much very good lift. So these two methods, I call them crawl methods. They look quite funny, but they work actually really, really well uh, for me and for the Tenere. The reason being I'm really short and the Tenere lays down quite low. Uh, these methods are from Motortrek and uh, they <clears throat> utilize the fact that um, if I press towards the bike with my shoulders and all the force comes from the muscles and the, and the legs, I actually make that to happen. So how does it work? Uh, you grab something uh, to have a straight arms. I brace and then I just walk towards the bike and now I transition to push with my chest and that's how I lift the bike. Works very well. There's another variation of this from Auto Track. This crawl is probably my favorite now. The last, very popular as well, especially with the dual sports and lighter bikes or bigger bikes which are not that low on the ground. Handlebar lift. Mechanics is very simple. The wheel needs to point to the sky and you're supposed to grab the handlebar with two arms and then lifted it up that way. This one doesn't work that well for me because I'm short, thinner, is tall and heavy and I reach the point where my legs are straight, my arms are straight and a bike is definitely not upright. Which means that I have to transition to something else. Chris Birch shows moving like that way, pushing that way. I hate this one. Okay, let's talk about lifting a bike if maybe you're not quite as strong. So you've probably seen a lot of videos of tiny women picking up absolutely enormous bikes. But the unfortunate fact of the matter is not everybody can lift every single bike. For me, I was able, after a lot of practice, to actually pick up Tenere, but that was maximum effort. For my purposes, I'm out in difficult terrain, I'm solo, I need to be able to pick up a bike when I have food poisoning and I'm at 3,000 meters and uh, I've lifted it five times in a day. So for my purposes, a lighter bike makes more sense. But if you're saying staying tarmac or easier roads, your calculation might be different. Also, if you're riding with someone else, you may find that even if you can't lift up the bike, there's actually some techniques where um, two people together can lift up the bike by having one person hanging off the back wheel and providing a counterbalance. It looks like it actually wouldn't make a difference, but it actually makes a huge amount of difference, makes it much, much easier to lift. So if you're riding with a friend, even if that friend and yourself are not that strong, by utilizing this method, you could pick up even a very heavy bike when one of you drops it. So, try to find your method, keep safe, keep your back safe, and uh, that's about it. Okay, one uh, where my are. Uh, what did I want to say? I don't even know what I wanted to say. <laughs>